Hi everyone, we are here uh, live with on Facebook uh, airing our episode 3, Fear is Your Frenemy, of our ultimate guide to surviving the holidays when you can't stand your spouse. And we are here with a very special guest today, uh, Brandy Fine. Hi everyone. So we recognize that a lot of our clients come to us uh, afraid and never having hired an attorney before, not really knowing what to expect, there's a lot of fear there. And so we actually have at our firm a client concierge. And this client concierge is the person who kind of helps you throughout the divorce process. And so Brandy is the perfect person for this because she is not only emotionally intelligent and intuitive, but she can also speak from experience herself. So we thought it would be a really great idea if we kind of interviewed her today and had her open up about her own experiences with divorce and talk to you guys about that to kind of help you understand or help you know that we really understand where you're coming from and that this is going to be a great go-to resource for you when you are afraid and needing support um, within the team. So, Brandy, can you tell us a little bit about maybe your role here um, and then tell us a little bit about your personal experience? Uh, so my role here, uh, as she said, is the client concierge. So a lot of times um, people are going to speak to me when they call our office. And uh, it's pretty common that people don't really know what to say at first. Um, you know, they've never called an attorney's office. Um, they're facing a serious matter and they don't know where to begin. Um, so a lot of times uh, we just kind of, I start asking questions. You know, what is your name? How can we help you? Um, what is your matter about? You know, things like that. Um, and then we kind of go through different, you know, other questions. You know, where are you located? And, you know, how do you think that, you know, we could help you with this matter and kind of guide you through? So a lot of times, you know, you'll come in, you'll meet with me. Um, I can guide you and go through the consultation with you if you need it. Um, you know, I do a lot of emails and calls. So a lot of our clients are constantly talking to me and whether they like it or not. <laughs> Um, they like it, most of them like it. They like it, it mostly. Um, so that's kind of what my role is here, among some other things. So, Yeah, she's much easier to get a hold of than sometimes the attorneys are. And I know everybody wants to talk to their attorney, but um, this is kind of a great way to get a different aspect, a different uh, perspective on your case. Um, much easier to get a hold of. So when you need something more responsive than what an attorney can give you, this is a great resource. Additionally, oh, yeah. I'm not an attorney. Yes, she's not an attorney. I'm so. not an attorney. Um, I'm not. I mean, I'm more familiar now with the law process than I was before. But I'm not an attorney, so a lot of times um, I'll be sitting in with meetings, and you know, maybe I don't understand the legalese, or it's something that's a little bit above my grasp. So it's a it's a great. I'm a great way to kind of help us both, you know, find out what that means, or you know, what it, what is discovery, and so that kind of allows me to help our clients if they don't know the process I can explain it in a little bit more simplified terms and not so much the legal terminology so that is helpful too okay cool yeah um, for those of you that are watching live can you hear us because I'm doing it without a microphone today so if you can do like a thumbs up or something so we know that you can hear us if not I'll plug in the microphone anybody oh. okay I'm guessing they can hear us can you guys hear us? Okay, all right, okay. All right, um, yes, okay, all right, great, okay. And, um, okay, so let's talk about your own divorce. Talk about some of your fears, since today's topic is about fears. Um, talk to us about what were some of your fears when it, it occurred to you that you may be facing a divorce. What were you, or give us maybe, maybe I don't know, you tell your story, maybe giving us background first and then talk about the fears. Yeah, so I was in my relationship for seven years before I got married. Um, I wanted to make sure and, uh, you know, I felt like after seven years I was pretty sure and so we got married, we had a wedding at our house and it was great and um, divorce never occurred to me because, <laughs> I mean, I had waited seven years, I thought I was sure and, um, so we kind of had started having some trouble about a year into our marriage, and um, we started going to counseling. Um, we kind of separated um, because I thought that was kind of maybe the best plan of action to give us both some space to kind of work things out on our own. And um, then something traumatic happened, and I'm not going to go into what that is, um, but it was very traumatic. And I was in shock 
I was angry, I was confused, I didn't know what to do, and I, you know, in that first day, I would say, um, I was a mess. I really, I had no idea. I was literally in shock, and I didn't know what to do. And so I called one of my friends, and I said, you know, X, Y, Z happened, and I need somewhere to go. Like, I can't be alone, I'm afraid, I'm angry, I'm confused, please help me. And that was one of the hardest things for me to do is to reach out to someone because I was afraid of what they were gonna think about me or my relationship or any of that stuff. So that was kind of the situation that happened. And um, the trauma was so bad that I knew I was gonna get divorced, right? This is so bad, I'm divorcing this person and moving on with my life, right? And so that's funny, because then a couple months later, I decided I wasn't getting divorced, maybe. Like, maybe I'd try and work it out, right? Like, I love this person, I spent so much time with them, I married them, I can't give up, right? <laughs> Even though this horrible thing happened to me, I still wanted to try. And I'm so glad that I didn't. <laughs> So we went to dinner, and, and just sitting across from him at dinner, I said, you know what, this was a horrible mistake, I don't know what I was thinking, never mind, let's get divorced, right? So that's kind of what led me to my divorce. Um, some of the fears when I was facing the divorce process was, how are we going to do that? My story is a little different, you know, we'd only been married a year, we didn't have any children or any assets together at that point, so it was kind of simple. Um, but still, I didn't know what to expect. I had been investing in our home. You know, I had all these questions about what I was gonna do. How was I gonna mentally get through it? I mean, I was a mess, just to be honest. I mean, I think that's understandable. I think, um, yeah, going through what you had to go through and even just thinking about the divorce. I mean, marriage, you enter into a marriage with this idea that you're gonna spend the rest of your lives together. There's this dream that you sort of create, this fairy tale, and mm -hmm. um, then it turns out to not be that way. And so, so um, it's scary because your plan is not the plan anymore. And now you have to think of a different plan. And what are you gonna do? Because you have no idea what this other plan is supposed to be, no clue. Yeah, so um, I was afraid, but um, you know, like you said, I got a plan. I started, I, I got a counselor, which okay. I highly recommend to anyone that's dealing with trauma. Yes, um, and we do have counselors that we, we refer our clients to and we consider as part of our team. Um, so definitely that's a great first step. Well, definitely it helps with your, you know, you don't wanna be thinking negatively. You wanna be positive and like think about the opportunities that are in front of you, not the what ifs, you wanna be what, what are the opportunities now that I'm making this plan? What, could, what, what can I do? And the truth is you can do anything. And you just create a plan and then you execute your plan. And what are some of the, you know, I think you, you and I, when we had spoken, you talked about overcoming your fears. Yes. What are some tips or advice that you have for helping people in your situation to overcome fear? So um, I think one of the things is, was, my fear was the unknown. Um, and I think when you're facing anything unknown, the best way to deal with that is to educate yourself. I mean, you know, go online, research it. Um, when you're facing a divorce, go online, look at attorneys. Um, I didn't know how we were gonna handle the legal process, so I kind of was looking at that. And, you know, what does it mean for, you know, what do some of these divorce terms mean, which, you know, we talk about in our firm a lot. Um, you know, what am I gonna do? Um, I got used to a different, a, a lifestyle, and, and where was I gonna live now, you know? and well, all of that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, those fears were overwhelming. What about, so you had fears about the marriage itself and sort of that immediate future, but what about fears about post-divorce life? What were some of those? So, um, you know, financially, I had been part of a, a couple, so we had kind of our financial things. Because you guys had been together for eight years at that point, right? Right, so right. Had, so now to be independent, financially independent again. Yes. Um, how was I, you know, we had a dog. You know, there was some contention there about who's gonna get the dog. Of course I took her. <laughs> but, um, just, you know, not to, not to mention I ha got laid off from my job around oh, the same right. time. Mm -hmm. So that was a fear too, like, okay, now 
uh, not only am I getting divorced, but I got laid off from my job, and you know, where am I going to live? What am I going to do? All these things, you know. And so I just started kind of working toward how to fix those things, like how you know, educate myself. What are my options? You know, what what is a good part of town that I want to live in? Um, you know, what can I afford? You know, I had to recreate a budget for myself. I had to, you know, do all these things. So, you know, the fear is financially, emotionally, but I was kind of dealing with that, so. So tell me, I don't know if you want to share with, it's just between ladies, right? So between girlfriends. And so did you have any sort of fears about being single for the rest of your life or anything like that? I know sometimes we hear that. And did you have any of those fears? I definitely, Felt like I was never gonna trust anyone again. Mm. Like, I thought, oh, I'm messed up now. I'm damaged goods. Um, how am I ever gonna trust anyone again? I mean, I didn't go into the details, but I was really terrified that I would never trust anyone. Um, and, but I was lonely. So I started going out with friends. Like, I just started to try to find ways to get out of the house. because. For a while, I was at home with my dog, and thankfully my dog got me outside walking, and so I wasn't just living in my sweatpants every day. I had to go outside. Um, so my friends started taking me out to places, and I started meeting people and you know, seeing friends, and it was okay, and I started getting okay again. And then I was like, okay, well, I'm bored. Like, maybe I'll go on some dates or something, you know, like just to get out of the house again. Like, I was home alone, so. Um, I started meeting some really nice guys, surprisingly, and I, I hear a lot of horror stories about dating, but I actually was meeting nice people, so, you know, I thought eventually it's going to work itself out, and I didn't want to focus on that either. Like, it wasn't that I wanted to be dating, I didn't. I just wanted to be not alone, and I was focused on myself, so that was really important to me too, like, to keep focusing on what I was going to do. You know, it wasn't about getting into another relationship, it was like, how am I going to help myself? And so... Um, eventually I actually met someone that was really wonderful and you know I told him I have trust issues and he made it through those like and we've been together for six years and then um, I just and then you did something very brave even so despite all that hurt and that pain then uh, she decided to it's actually kind of a funny story of how uh, she still managed to work with our office and still live out a dream that was probably terrifying at the same time yes um, I went back to college. I was 34, 35, and uh, I had put that on hold, unfortunately. I should have continued a long time ago, but I, I went back to college. I went to UT Dallas. I enrolled, and um, I'd already had my associate's degree, and so I decided I was going to focus on business administration. And um, when I was going to school, I met Alex, and um, I got my degree. So. <laughs> And then, um, and then she told me, so she, we worked together for a little while, and then she told me that, oh, I'm graduating now and I want to go explore the country. Mm -hmm. And so she did something that, only, that some of us only kind of dream of, and she and her partner decided to go uh, into the Wild West, I don't know, and um, <laughs> get an RV and go on an adventure. And, uh, but she was so awesome that we still figure out a way to make it work. Um, so that she could work with us virtually and the clients never know like you know she's still part of their um, their experience and so that's how strongly I guess we feel about really supporting each other and making things work and not just with our clients but within the firm too we really want women and we want to empower each other and we want to support each other through the whole process and yeah. so um, we find ways to make it work Yes. The motorhome thing was really scary, by the way, in case you're thinking about it. Um, it ended up, you know, we, we questioned it several times throughout the process of planning, you know, and preparing, and we were like, is this really the best thing to do? Like, this is kind of scary. Like, we're about to pack up all of our stuff, and, you know, and every time we questioned ourselves, it was like, no, this is the right thing. This is what we want. And so we overcame that fear by planning and preparation and every time we thought is this is this the right thing it was like yes this is the most rational thing for us at the time and so we've spent a year traveling and it was incredible but did you know that's also kind of a leap of faith in your relationship because oh, yes. you guys <laughs> I mean they got rid of you guys got rid of everything yes and so I mean to have that leap of faith especially for someone who had trust issues and now to go into this tiny box with this person <laughs> for a year 
giving up everything. So if it doesn't work, either you guys are going to be at each other's throats and then you're like, oh crap, I have no house, no furniture, nothing. Yes. Or you make it work and it, and you know, you just figure it out. So I'm sure, I don't know. We were afraid. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we were out in nature. So even though we lived in a small 250 square foot place, um, there was outside. So at any point, you know, if one of us wanted to go for a walk or if, you know, and we became really close during that time and we learned how to deal with our problems in a close space and like how to overcome those things and you know we faced change constantly because we were moving all the time you know every two weeks we we're in a new place so new grocery stores new every everything was changing every day all the time and so it got really used to change and so to me it's not even scary anymore to me it's more scary to think about not changing what am I missing out on because I'm staying with this norm that I'm used to? So to me, I want to always change every day, like something new, something, you know, and plan it and prepare for it and, and then make it happen every day. So would you, could you relate that to what fears might be if you stayed in a marriage that was a toxic, bad place for you? I, I can't even imagine what would have happened if I had stayed in my marriage. It's kind of the fear of, um, the, the fear of not doing something is is worse than the fear of actually doing something you know like what it, what is it's so scary to me to think if I hadn't done something you know versus the fear of doing something and, and I was so prepared by that time I wasn't even afraid anymore like I had planned it I had prepared it and then I did it and I wasn't afraid because I was ready and I knew what was coming I knew what to what to expect and I dealt with it and I did it and I, I think I take that attitude every day like anything that I'm afraid of doing I do it immediately like just here like let's get it done with and there's no reason to be afraid of that like let's just take care of it every day so I think that definitely relates to a lot of our clients you know what is what is the greater fear fear of not doing something or fear of changing to be better and be happy the only thing you have to risk is your happiness really so you can either take steps to go forward and create a new future for yourself or stay stuck where you are knowing exactly how you're gonna feel Mm -hmm. if you stay there. Yep. Um, so I guess to kind of summarize it, uh, the things that I've kind of learned listening from Brandy and you, you, your lessons may be different, but kind of to summarize the takeaways that I'm hearing here are um, the fear of staying has to be less, or the fear of change and looking forward to a new future has to be greater than the fear of staying. Um, and not to be afraid of that future because the future can be a really great unexpected surprise and gift and blessing. Yes. Um, you could have things that you never imagined before um, that you just can't think of now because of the place that you're in. I think support, having people to support you through the process, yes. um, like the <clears throat> therapist and, and, and your friends and family and, and obviously good attorneys and things. Mm -hmm. And then plan and prepare. I heard you say that several times, was having a plan, being prepared, and certainly our firm is huge about that. Um, we're definitely big into planning and preparing. Um, you don't have to file for divorce right away. You can think about it. You can create a plan of action, and you can kind of structure how your divorce will go. Um, you just have to have the right team to help you make that happen. Yes. So do you have any other sort of last words of wisdom or anything for... No, I think you covered that. Okay, great. All right, cool. Yeah. Um, we have lots of resources on our website. It's a growing database of these videos. We're having, we're working on different um, tools and resources that we're going to be adding to the website and making it even better because educating yourself is so important. We want to be a go-to resource for everyone. Um, so keep checking back for updates as we work through the holidays and trying to get some more stuff up and just for you guys. And we hope that you'll tune in next Tuesday at 2 o'clock. So Tuesdays at 2. And that's our next Facebook Live mini series, which um, I don't actually remember what the next episode is, but our checklist is on, on our Facebook, it's on our website, it's on our video resources. So if you go to our website, the resources page, the videos, um, it's all set out there for you. And our handle is at Family Law DFW. I think that's our Facebook, our Instagram, and our website. So check it all out, and we hope to see you next Tuesday. Bye, yeah. everyone. Uh -huh.